Today we're going to learn about action and reaction, which will help us understand our characters even better. Our goal today will be to learn how to explain how a character's actions contribute to the sequence of events. And to do this, we're going to learn what actions and reactions mean. We'll, we're also going to learn how to imagine a story happening differently than the way it was written. Actions are the stuff that a character does, and they're the events in a story. Some actions are also called reactions, and these are how a character responds to the events in the story. Let's take a look. I know this story is very familiar to you by now, but let's read it together just to make sure we remember. Read along with me. A wolf found great difficulty in getting at the sheep owing to the vigilance of the shepherd and his dogs. But one day it found the skin of a sheep that had been flayed and thrown aside. So it put it on over its own pelt and strolled down among the sheep. The lamb that belonged to the sheep whose skin the wolf was wearing began to follow the wolf in the sheep's clothing. So, leading the lamb a little apart, he soon made a meal of her, and for some time he succeeded in deceiving the sheep and enjoying hearty meals. I want us to think about the actions and reactions in the story. We already created a timeline for all of the actions in the story, so let's put that up. Okay, we know that the wolf had trouble getting to the sheep, the wolf found the skin and put it on. The lamb followed the wolf. The wolf ate the lamb. And finally, the wolf ate the other sheep too. Now we need to ask ourselves, what are some of the wolf's reactions in this story? Things that he did because other stuff happened. He's responding to the story. We know that the wolf's traits are that he's selfish, tricky, and deceitful. How do we see that in the story? Let's take a look at the very beginning. A wolf found great difficulty in getting at the sheep. So the wolf couldn't get to the sheep, but because he's tricky and deceitful, he came up with another way to do it. One way we could think about this is, the wolf was tricky and deceitful, so he came up with a way to get to the sheep. Another thing we can think about in this story is this. The lamb thought the wolf was his mother, so the wolf was able to eat the lamb. These are reactions to things that happened in the story. If the wolf hadn't done this, or if the story had happened a little differently, things might have turned out very different. For example, what if the wolf wasn't very tricky or very deceitful? Would he have eaten any of the lamb? I don't think so. We can also think about how maybe the lamb wasn't tricked by the sheepskin that he was wearing. The lamb didn't think that the wolf was his mom. Would the wolf have been able to eat him? Probably not. These reactions directly contribute to the sequence of events. They're the reason why the events happen the way they do. This is really important when we think about how a story is happening. Some questions that you might get that will mean that you need to think about a character reaction are these. You might see this question. How did a character react to an event in the story? For this story, you might have a question like, how did the wolf react to the shepherd and the dog doing such a good job? We know that the answer is he came up with a tricky way to get to the sheep anyway. Another question you might see is, at the end of the story, what was a character's reaction to something? So you might hear a question like, at the end of the story, what was the lamb's reaction to the wolf? We know that the lamb got tricked by the wolf, so the lamb's reaction was to follow the wolf around. A story is made up of actions and reactions, and I know that you can figure them out. Think about how a story would be different if something didn't happen. Would it not really affect the story? 
or would it have a huge effect on the story?